back to another episode of Inside Access Control. Very excited today to have Lewis Warner from Quill Security join me today. Lewis, thank you for taking the time. Absolutely, Lee. Thanks for having me. Of course. So you and I, we connected uh, via LinkedIn, which has been a great uh, resource in getting to know people. And then we had an initial conversation. And I found what you're working on quite fascinating. So I thought it'd be great to have you come on the uh, Inside Access Control and let the uh, community know what you're doing. So if you don't mind, uh, why don't you give a little bit of background on yourself and then also give us a little bit of uh, on the company. Yeah, great, thank you for the intro. Uh, my name is Lewis Warner, I'm one of the founders of Quill Security. So my background's in enterprise SaaS. I've been in the industry for a decade and um, part of the other foundership of the company is security risk consultants and uh, full stack development. We built Quill to be essentially a risk intelligence and analytics platform for the physical security industry. Um, risk is a big word, lots of uh, departments and people use it in many different ways, uh, but physical security has been way behind the times. They're in the 1950s with legal pads and pencils and uh, you know Excel's we'll say 1995 for, for the Excel tables. Um, and we're trying to modernize those tools with the core tenant being your risk profile changes every day that your risk assessment should too. Uh, that, that's in, in back from our prior conversation. Um, if talk a little bit about when we think risk assessment, there's mm -hmm. many different types. It's a, it's a very big item, even in our, you know, I, I, I can't seem to get my arms around all the areas. So, can you give a little bit of just a breakdown of risk assessment and what you mean by that? Because there's internal and external threats. We hear some mm -hmm. of it from mm -hmm. a lot of times on the IT logical uh, side of the business, but on the physical side, only typically in the high security do you hear about it, but there's, mm -hmm. there's ways to bring it down in the mainstream market and the rest. So uh, being the expert that you are in it, can you give just a, you know, for the, the layman's uh, version of what, what you mean by risk assessment? Sure. So at Quill, we follow a methodology called CVT. And whenever I say that, most people uh, have no idea what the letters are, but then they recognize the methodology. So it stands for, in our case, criticality, vulnerability, and threat. That means basically that risk is a very simple equation of the criticality of your assets, how important they are to your organization's mission, the vulnerability to various threats. So how much you are doing to mitigate the success of a potential attack, and then the size of those threats or their likelihood or prevalence in your geography, demography, population, et cetera. Um, what Quill does is employ that exact same philosophy that most security risk consultants are uh, using right now to deliver paper risk assessments at a scale and with such flexibility that isn't possible in Excel. Gotcha. And then, so from an access control standpoint, uh, how can you talk a little bit about how systems could use, uh, you know, systems like yourself that, that do risk assessment? Yeah. So there's a, there's a two directional feedback that's possible between any security control and uh, risk assessment. The first one is kind of the obvious level. You invest in these controls like access control to mitigate risk. So it has some sort of value. Electronic access control is a really good one because it segments easily along a particular vector. Is the threat actor an insider, an invitee, or an outsider? It's very effective against outsiders. It's less effective against insiders because you explicitly give them access to your site. So um, electronic access control means that has a, a mitigation profile against the uh, 250 some different threat definitions that we look at in the physical security world, which for our purposes is from vandalism to terrorism, a bad actor doing something to disrupt a physical space. Yeah, so I guess it's a good way of to also looking at it where a lot of times in access control, it's a binary relationship. It's like, does this person have a card and does it have access at this point? But this mm -hmm. is to take a, a, a sort of like a situational awareness aspect of uh, into, the, into the equation that you have. So talk to me a little bit about um, what verticals do you see adopting this uh, now? And then if you were to look out, uh, if you had a crystal ball, where mm -hmm. do you see it uh, starting to get some traction? Yeah, well, I think that uh, we're a three-year-old company. So most of our adoption has been driven more by our market maturity than by the actual market's maturity, meaning we have to work with clients who can work with startups and make reasonable 
buying decisions on a timeline that's viable for us. Um, I think the most obvious client for us is the GSA. They manage a huge amount of square footage and uh, have a very sensitive and public um, risk to any incidents happening on that square footage. Um, but right now where we're seeing the most adoption is private higher ed, healthcare facilities, and corporate campuses, Fortune 2000 about. Um, because those are organizations that understand the impact of security incidents. They probably have centralized security leadership already um, who sits at the table and at least has discussions with the other departments of the organization. And um, they're trying to answer these questions already, especially the corporate, uh, corporate campuses, Fortune 2000. These CSOs, which um, you know, not every corporation has a CSO just yet, but these CSOs come to the table with every other department that has data and analytics and projections and are they're spending big budgets on being able to project what is our um, marketing um, gonna, response gonna look like over the next year? What are we projecting sales as? How should we balance inventory? And security shows up with, well, oh, these were the incidents last month and this is the budget I want next month. And it's just not enough. Yeah, so uh, I can see uh, how they would do that. And those, those areas, they, they do make sense on that end. Uh, but, mm. you know, I, like you said, as, as systems need to become more dynamic, the ability mm. to bring data. So talk to me a little bit about this, though. Um, so you would agree, tell me if you agree or disagree with, with this statement, so go, go along with it. Um, the, the idea that this is intended to be a data point that is used to make a decision. This is not necessarily like, you know, binary also where it's you create these criteria and if this happens, then do that or or is it? I don't know. Um, how, how is it utilized primarily uh, in, in the best way? I'm going to say yes, I agree. This is a tool to uh, provide a data point to aid in decision making. The unique thing about security is that, um, you know, the decisions have existential consequences for organizations and for people and someone is accountable for those decisions and computer systems are never going to be the accountable party. So um, the, the two realms of AI are basically automating simple decision making tasks or providing context and aiding human made decision tasks. And we are definitely in that later camp. So risk is a risk is a parameter that should be taken into account. Um, whenever you're making a security investment decision or reallocation or whether you're cutting budget, um, I'm sure security people empathize with the uh, idea that cost seems to be the only parameter that's taken into account. Well, risk is an important one. It's very difficult and abstract to talk about and Quill provides some of the evidence and foundation for uh, projections and um, trends over time and the data behind putting risk alongside cost so you can make reasonable ROI based decisions. Yeah, so bring in data to help you make an educated decision versus uh, you know doing things just off of feel. Yeah. yeah. So uh, question uh, around that though, I mean, so how, how do you, what are your views on, and, and people brought this up around sort of the, the biases that could be created. How, how, what is your take on that? Since you're an expert in it, it's something that I've thought about or have read about and, and you know, mm -hmm. try to noodle it, if you would, from a critical thinking side, but um, being an expert in the AI side, well, how, how do you, how do you view that? Yeah. So um, Quill's original mission, when we, when we just started exploring, uh, can we turn this consultant super spreadsheet into a, into a real enterprise application? Our original mission was to eliminate bias. Uh, the thinking being that if you look at security bro programs broadly, a lot of the enthusiasm, a lot of the selling, a lot of the demand is for detection and response or enforcement capabilities. And most practitioners agree that prevention and deterrence is where the value is. Um, so that seems to be a world that's a little out of balance if they're over investing in detection and response and under investing in prevention and deterrent. Uh, so that's the big bias in the field, I think. Um, however, there's a, there's a great book about this and I'm forgetting the author, but the name of the book is Weapons of Mass Destruction. 
uh, it's, it's phenomenal. And um, it's really about model building and how the specific choices that the model builders make can have consequences on huge populations downstream uh, under adoption. And Quill is in that world too, where um, we're, we're at risk of becoming a dogma and there are dogmas in the field now. Um, so it's something we guard against. Uh, the way I think about it is there's, there's actually four areas that are critical for us to put error bars when we, fundamentally what we do is we provide data so that the users can take a narrative and gain buy-in with their institutions. And the things that can cloud that narrative are errors just in measurement, um, bias in, in the model, both on our side and in the people collecting the data and putting it into the model, uh, uncertainty, which is inescapable, but needs to be described, and randomness, which is also inescapable and distinct from uncertainty. So uh, we have a pretty rigorous um, view on that. And what it really means is that we need to know when you should stop talking because there's no data to support further conjectures. That's how I think about it. Uh, I appreciate that. And, and thank you for, for answering. And that's actually uh, well organized and thought through. So um, what, what's nice is it, it's also good, I think, sometimes to have these conversations, number one, so that it, it is such a conver it needs to be a conversation. We are mm. early in the game on the technology from an adoption standpoint, it might've been around for a while, but from a mm -hmm. mainstream adoption, if you would have understanding really too, right? Mm -hmm. So having these conversations allows people to, to, to digest. I also like the fact I can tell that you've thought about like, you know, what could go wrong, which yeah. is, which is an area that, uh, you know, we, we don't necessarily always do in technology, but it's an important way, I think, to, to approach it because you can prevent some things from happening. You're not going to prevent everything. And then I also think it's important to know that, you know, this is, there's a human side of this and, and um, just being aware that, that it's not just the computer, there's the human side. So, yeah. Absolutely. We call those pre-mortems at Quill. Um, we do it on our business model and we do it on the models that we share with our clients about security specifically. If this goes wrong, let's, let's assume that, um, you know, um, we come up with a next quarterly plan and uh, imagine ourselves at the end of that quarter, the plan has failed. Why did it fail? Just as a mental experiment, right? Um, it's a lot less expensive than a postmortem. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. It is, yeah. It's so sort of like, uh, what is it? Uh, check twice, cut once, or is yeah. that the, yeah, yeah. So it's the same, same type of approach uh, on that end. So no, I appreciate it. All right. Um, so who's your customer, if you would? Who, who's buying this type of technology and interested in it? You said the CSO, but if I'm not a CSO, like you said, not a lot of them have it. Who, mm -hmm. who, who are the other people, if you would, that, that have interest in it? Yeah. So um, I get asked this question a lot, and it's, it's, uh, it's hard to answer because our profile is not, you know, at a hierarchy level and organizational structure or a specific industry vertical. Our, our, our target market and where we're most successful is ambitious, curious security leaders. Because those are people who are struggling with this now. They are stressed and anxious because they can't get good answers to this or they know that they're relying on a three-year-old risk assessment that has a ton of assumptions that are no longer true. Um, those are the people, whether they are, you know, a security manager under facilities or the CSO of a multinational corporation, it's that profile of, um, I, I need to have answers to these. I am the source of strategic advice about security risk at this company and our company is not going to achieve our mission without my advice. So I need to make sure my advice is as good as possible. Uh, that person, that's, that's who we help. Okay, that makes sense. So I, I like that. So the information source, it's actually every time, just now, a couple of times we've talked, it's, it, I, I learn more, so, that it's, it's, so I, I, I appreciate that. Because it's, it's what's interesting on that way, I bring that up. I come in with preconceived notion of what about the threat analysis means and then, um, and, and then continuously learn. So it tells me, that, at least for myself, on the learning journey of, having these engagements where I feel like I have somewhat of an understanding, but then it's just, it's sort of like this door opens that door, which is continuously doing it. So yeah. I appreciate you uh, shedding light on that. Uh, it's, it's great to hear. Um, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> um, so, um, so yeah, so uh, what, what are you looking for? Uh, so as a, as a business, are you looking for partners? Everyone's looking for customers, so you don't get to mm -hmm. say that one, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, are you looking for partners? Are you looking for integrators? Like, what is? What are you looking for? 
Oh, good question. Good question. So right now we are, um, you know, we're, we're a young company. We're about three years old as a company. The solution has been extant for about a year. But what I, uh, what I want most is for people to use it and criticize it and identify where the gaps are and where we need to be better. If I, um, actually, you can sign up for a free trial account right now, if you'll permit me just a little bit of a shameless promotion. Yeah, that's um, why I asked. So go ahead. <laughs> go into quillsecurity.com, Q-U-I-L-L, security.com. There'll be links to try Quill for free and there's, a, there's an email validation step, but that will basically port you into a single facility version of a Quill environment where you have access to every feature that we are developing as we develop it. So, um, and if, if people signed up for uh, that trial and then messaged us, there's a message us in the app button and said, um, I wouldn't bring this to my boss because it's missing X, that's golden feedback. And that's, that's all we want to do is collaborate and listen and figure out how we can deliver on what we've heard. Nice. And if people want to engage with you, because I know you, like this type of conversation, I, I have a feeling with organizations, uh, and you know, I don't want, I'm not going to like, you know, pimp out your uh, consulting right. service here. But I, I do believe a, a conversation to understand how data and information can help make decisions is important. So and I know you are approachable because we have. Um, so yeah. if people want, where's the best place to engage with you directly to, to have a conversation? Yeah, uh, well, at this stage, pretty much any contact uh, number, email, or form that you can find about Quill will go to me. Um, there you go. But you can reach me directly at firstname.lastname, lewis.warner at quillsecurity.com. Um, the, there's, a, there's a phone number on the Quill contact page, too, that goes right to my cell phone. So um, I welcome all conversations anyone might be interested in. Perfect. All right, well, Lewis, thank you very much. I appreciate the insight into the company, the conversation. Again, it opened another door of mine to, to now sort of noodle on and, and I'm sure I'll have some follow up for you. But uh, I recommend people engaging with you to just start to have this conversation. It's a tool that can really help you make some data decisions uh, in a fast paced world currently, as yeah. it is right now, having right. more of that data is more, ever more important. So thank you very much for taking the time. And I look forward to more of these conversations. Absolutely. Thank you, Lee.